Ladies and gentlemen, AMD have confirmed 14nm. Now, this means that their CPUs, GPUs, and APUs will appear next year with the most advanced 14nm FinFET process technology possible, and this will be dubbed 14LPP. Before I continue with the video, I want to just warn you all if you hear explosions, uh, just the same warning in the previous video, um, I've not been teleported to a war zone, it is fireworks season here in the UK, and so there are explosions afoot. So, Global Foundries have confirmed that they will be the provider of this technology, and they have issued a press statement along with AMD, and AMD would say, and I quote, um, Global Foundries today announces it has demonstrated silicon technology success to the first AMD product using Global Foundries' most advanced 14nm FinFET process technology. As a result of this milestone, Global Foundries' silicon proven technology is planned to be integrated into multiple AMD products that address the growing need for high performance, power efficient compute and graphics technologies across a broad set of applications from personal computers, to data centers, to immersive computer devices. So we've known for some time now, of course, that AMD are working on new products, but it has been considerably more up in the air, I guess you could say, what process they were gonna finally use. Um, Dr. Lisa Su had hinted at, yes, it was gonna be a strong process, which is kind of like, duh, of course it would be, but whether it's gonna be 16 or 14 NM, no one in their right mind had a clue. AMD are in a bit of a funny situation of late. We know that they are not doing so well financially, but their product lineup, particularly next year, is looking pretty damn interesting. So a couple of weeks ago, um, they have actually completed the design of Arctic Islands. There go the explosions. Um, and they're basically taped out. They're ready for mass production next year. And of course, this means that its entire graphics lineup is going to be changed for this 14nm FinFET, prep, FinFET process technology, excuse me, over the next couple of uh, months, whatever that is. CPU side of things, same deal. We've known, of course, of both Zen and K12, a lot less about K12 than Zen. But we do know that essentially the design is completed, it's being taped out and on track for next year, slash 2017, I say slash 2017, because some of the products are going to happen. But, the weird thing about Zen is that the whisper on the street, if you will, is that it is meeting all expectation, there are no significant bottlenecks, and it is looking pretty damn shit hot. The problem with Zen, well not the problem, but the, the issue at the moment AMD are facing is basically getting rid of the last few bugs and trying to basically clock the silicon as high as possible, figuring out what yields they can get, and basically trying to figure out what the various, I guess, product offerings are based upon the good old fashioned product binning. So AMD have taped out multiple devices, on Global Foundry's 14nm Low Power Plus, that's what LPP stands for, Process Technology is currently conducting validation work on the 14 LPP. Um, they are ramping up production ready yields, an excellent model to hardware, this is part of the quote, uh, and this is actually in a Fab 8 facility in New York in January. The early access version of the technology was successfully qualified for volume reduction achieving yield targets on lead consumer products. The performance enhanced version of the technology was qualified for the third quarter of 2015, with the ramp early ramp include incurring in the fourth quarter of 2015 and full-scale production set for early 2016. That's a whole bunch of words, but it basically means that they've said, okay, we can now make things at smaller, you know, smaller, um, smaller dies, Okay, now we can do it at a, at a volume that's not basically meaning that one in every ten actually functions. So, you know, the other nine are not basically completely and utterly useless, so that's good. Okay, now we're pretty much at the at the the, the testing phase, you know, that's, that's pretty much done. So now we can actually start to produce the silicon in high 
numbers so it's obviously ready for customers because at the end of the day if they're producing obviously silly numbers but if they're producing five and uh, a day that's not really going to help they need to ensure that they're producing a high volume so they can keep the cost down and also meet demands it's a bit of a it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit, bit of a catch-22 do bear in mind that the next generation of GPUs known as Arctic Islands um, for example, the flagship of which is supposedly going to be known as Greenland is going to be ridiculous. Up to 18 billion transistors. I'm going to give you a bit of an assignment. Yes, you are now back in school, apparently. Seriously, this is for funsies. Go ahead and do some Googling. Yeah, I believe it's on Wiki. Look at the transistor count of processors and GPUs from, let's say, 2006 to 2000. 12. Just have a quick look and you'll honestly be completely shocked at how quickly the transistor count has in increased. It is quite impressive. Now some of this is down to things such as cash, um, because really back, really back far in the day, you know, the, the, the late 90s for sake of argument, cash wasn't really a thing and oftentimes it wasn't even on the actual die of the processor. Now, that's no longer the case. Technically, I guess you could say HBM2, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a situation. But with 18 billion transistors, that is ridiculous. 32 gigabytes of HBM2, which means it's going to be running a 1 terabyte per second. Just, just think of that. Currently, the Fiji, which is obviously their flagship, you know, it, it's the one in the Fury, by the way, has half the transistor count half so you're basically making a gpu that's effectively twice as many transistors that's a lot of transistors 18 billion Ooh, yoy. we don't know about the number of pascal supposedly and i that's my favorite word for this video because obviously it's all up in the air but supposedly it's going to be fewer transistors i would like to point out the transistor transistor numbers don't necessarily equal to performance numbers so just because just for sake of argument nvidia's happens to be 16 and amd's happen to be 18 it doesn't mean that amd is going to have just for sake of argument like 10 percent or 12 percent or what have you percent uh, increase in performance it doesn't either scale linearly and it doesn't scale at all so it just depends on the architecture the way they've built it you know how their cores work what their setup is and so on and so forth but these next generation cards are gonna be monsters as well as the cpus as well i'm really looking forward to uh zen because it's gonna be pretty damn sweet at least in my opinion and do remember amd's own marketing slides do say that the high performance with two times energy efficiency compared to the current generation of gcm so that's that's not shabby. Anyway, I'm going to let you all go because the fireworks are getting worse. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.